Welcome to the Unterzee, Zaylor. Tell me, who are you exactly? Sorry I've been missing for so long, everyone. I am back, and we're back to regular uploads. Today, we're going to be exploring the second game in the Fall in London series. The series starts with Fall in London, a free text adventure that can be played in your browser, and honestly, I would encourage everyone to go try it. It is a blast. Today's game, Sunless Seas, and its sequel, Sunless Skies. So what is Sunless Seas? You play as a Z captain, setting sail from fallen London, a London that has fallen underground, onto the Untersee, a vast expanse of an underwater ocean. Your journey? To discover something. That something, at least for the purposes of this video, is kind of yourself. So that's where I come in. I am Huey, and this is the Channel Delta, your guide and their vehicle into the world of storytelling. Let's set sail looking at other people's fates and your own ability to be self-determinant. Sunless Sea is a sequel to Fall in London. Fall in London is this kind of in-browser text adventure game where you make actions and have stats and make decisions and try to make your way in this subterranean London. Sunless Sea expands on this idea both in mechanical scale and in physical locational scope. You now can explore the entire Untersee equipped with a ship. You'll probably notice that I'm using the word Z a lot in this video. That's because the game uses Z, Z E E, instead of C, S E A, Zailer instead of Sailor, Z Captain, Set Zail, etc. It's kind of one of the twists of the game. The gameplay of Sunless Sea has two locations at port and at Z. We'll start with at port. At port functions very similarly to Fall in London. You're looking at a screen of text options and you click on them. They're kind of like action trees. Make a decision and you go further into the tree. The decisions you can choose depend on what you have unlocked, either by the items you have or by your stats. And for certain challenges, you need a higher level of stat to increase your percent chance of success. A port, in addition to going through the story tab of the Gazetteer, which is your menu, and doing these actions or having conversations, you can also go to a bazaar where you buy and sell items. You can pick up jobs, be they transporting people, transporting goods, or scoping out other ports for the admiralty. Uh, you can do a port report, which is where you get a basic summary of the information. You can find some lodgings to reduce your terror or other things. It's very simple, a uh, kind of click through menu with a couple simple mechanical meters, be it your money or needing ship parts or whatever. And this is where you make upgrades, repairs, stuff like that. Once you're done with the actions, improving your ship, recruiting crew, and getting jobs, you set sail onto the sea. When you're on the Untersee, you have a kind of different style of gameplay, where before you were very much in a text adventure. At Z, you're in kind of a resource management game. You have basically three meters to keep track of. You have fuel, supplies, and terror. Fuel dictates how quickly your ship can go, how far your ship's range is on a given trip, and if you can have your light on or not. If you run out of fuel, that captain is dead. That Z captain's time is over. If you run out of fuel on the Unterzee, you're done. Supplies basically feed your crew. You need crew to operate your ship at a better capacity. And supplies don't dwindle as quickly as fuel. Also, if you run out of supplies, it's not as dire as fuel. You can make it to port on no supplies and still be okay. When you're out of fuel, you're done. Additionally, whenever you're exploring the Unterzee, your terror is always rising. And this is like the fear your crew has. You can combat its rise by turning your light on, which decreases how quickly it grows, or by docking at a port and doing an activity like stopping in a bar that reduces terror. If the terror gets too high or you run out of food, or even if you run out of fuel, uh, your crew members may revolt or one of the gods of the Z may demand a sacrifice to allow you to safely return to port, what have you. Basically, managing these meters dictates how well you do while on the Z. Additionally, you steer your boat, which is pretty simple. It's literally just the WASD keys, and you can get in fights, which is just one click of the mouse. Mechanically, Sunless Sea is incredibly simple. All you do in ports is click through menus, making text options, and at Z, you're just sailing and occasionally fighting and maybe experiencing random encounters, which play out like an action table. So on the surface, it should be a very easy game. And while it's easy to play, it's difficult to succeed in because the environment is harsh and unforgiving. It's hard to make money. 
the locations for jobs may be too far away for you to reach with your current ship, but you need the money from those jobs to get a better ship, etc. So it's very much this kind of struggle to survive in this Unterzee economy. But how does that tie into the characters of the story? Especially, how does that tie into the NPCs and your player character? Most of Sunless Sea's stories are driven by the NPCs or the officers. Occasionally also people in the ports you meet. When you recruit officers to your ship and you have six roles to fill, the officers can be spoken to and you can have conversations with them. Maybe you'll sacrifice a supply to take them to dinner, or they and you can work on skinning one of the strange catches you get from fighting some of the sea animals. Regardless, as you do, you unlock each officer's unique quest. These quest lines are the stories that are contained within the world of Sunless Sea. Something interesting about both Fallen London and Sunless Sea is that in a menu, when you're looking at the actions you can take, you see all the options, even if you can't perform them. So an option, instead of saying do or go, will say locked. When an option is locked, you can even see the requirements you need. Uh, whether you're short on money, you have too high or too low of a stat, if you haven't completed another objective. What this does is when you have a conversation with an officer or someone who has a quest line, you can often see the decision that is the final one. You can see the ending to their quest tree. This is very strange from a gameplay perspective. Obviously your character can't see that, so you can't choose the option, but you as a player are able to effectively see the fate of that character if you move through uninterrupted. As long as you let them complete their quest line, they always end at that point. In a way, your officers, the other NPCs that you pick up in town, etc., have a faded end. Their stories are passive. They're on a railroad track. Now you as the player can dictate how quickly or slowly they move along that track, and how many stops at other ports you make before their story continues, but they only have one track. There's not an option to divert them to another one. Lots of games do this, but it's pretty blatant here, and it really touches on NPCs as a stagnant, riding character. The only thing that stops them from reaching their goal is if you, as a Z captain, lead your ship to destruction and doom. You could die out on the Unterzee, and if you do, their fates are forever sealed. They don't get to see the completion of that arc. By showing you this, you know that they have one life path. And no matter what Z captain you choose, they always will. The same NPC, the surgeon, always has the same arc. The navigator always has the same arc. They all have the same arc for their character. It doesn't randomize the arc each time you do it, they're the same. They have a fate, it's set in stone. It's interesting because this is actually not true of you. The Z captain you play is not part of this passive story cycle. When you open a certain section of the Gazetteer, which is your menu, you can go to Legacy. In Legacy, it tells you how many Z captains have died previously before your current one. That's it. The only piece of information in there. This is, in a way, the point of the game. The game's kind of a roguelike. Uh, when your captain dies at Z, unless you're playing on merciful mode, which I really wouldn't encourage because it kind of is antithetical to the point of the game, you lose everything, aside from one trait you get to pass along. These roguelike elements are the nature of the game in many ways. You have one run as that Z captain, and then you get to leave maybe a portion of a stat or a little bit of money or a weapon or your map, which I like to leave because it's really helpful, to the next Z captain, but other than that, they start clean. They are a totally new person with no baggage. Additionally, you can choose a past for your captain, or choose not to have a past. Eventually you choose, at least I did every time I chose not to have one, I eventually picked a past, but you don't have to. And an objective. This is your ambition. It could be wealth, discovering your father's bones, or finding stories. However, each of these isn't that substantial. Your past only gives you a slight bonus to certain skills and one officer. The legacy leaves you a small dividend up front that helps a bit, but isn't game changing. And your ambition is far off, and most, if not almost all, of the Z captains you play as will never reach that. They'll just have bad luck at some point. This leads to a very different experience than the NPC storylines. 
where the NPCs were fated to reach the end, you could even see it in their dialogue trees, you as the Z captain can do whatever you want. One time you can be aggressive, go hunting for things. Other times you can do a lot of trade routes. You can skip meeting certain people, bring different port reports, lie, invest in different character arcs. You can be a cannibal. You could investigate those cannibals for the Admiralty. You could bring around Mr. Sachs, the evil version of Santa Claus. That one's obviously the holiday themed silly one, but each of these presents a different kind of option. The Z Captain has no set arc. In fact, you don't even have to achieve your ambition. You can retire in kind of a draw format if you get enough echoes, the money of the society. If you get enough, you can buy a, like a moderately sized house and retire there. It doesn't achieve your objective, but you also don't die at sea. Basically, the game is saying that you have total ability to decide your own story. There is no fate, and you know that because no two Z captains have the same experience as they reach their death. You carry their legacy because you have a different arc. If it was the same pattern, you wouldn't keep playing. The basic premise has to be that each is unique, and in doing so, it changes how you approach the game. That's what makes the Unterz so interesting of a place to explore. Each captain is a new member on their own roguelike journey, and therefore their experience of the game, how they interact with it, and how they tell their stories is fundamentally different. It touches back on the very first video I made for this channel, Active Narratives. To be a Z captain is, by its very nature, active. You literally choose every action that Z captain makes, and you can choose different ones every time, and pretty drastic ones too. The order does matter. Depending on certain things you do, you lose access to other islands or other ports, so you have to choose carefully. And as you move around, your Z captain evolves as a person. So we're left with these two worlds, this strong idea of fate on one hand, for the NPCs that you work with, and this very big legacy of choice for the Unterzee captain on the other. Games will never really be able to flesh out NPCs to the point that they have the same depth of story as a player. That's really hard to do. Some games try to give their NPCs broader storylines. Fallout often, Fallout New Vegas specifically, has lots of branching options for the NPCs and different outcomes, but they'll never be as complete as the player. Sunless Sea is a pretty straightforward example of this. You can specifically see, even though you can't access it, the exact ending of an NPC. The same is not true of your captain. You never know where you'll run, where you'll run out of fuel. You never know where, where you'll, you'll lose your supplies. You'll never know where you'll lose this or that or where you'll end or if you'll win. You're left with this dichotomy, but the important distinction is that even for the passive characters, even for the NPCs on the ship with you, you determine if they reach that fate. You are the one active element in their otherwise passive storylines. Similarly for you, the Z captain you play as has a completely active narrative. This is unique to games. At the end of the day, no other media lets you so clearly dictate the life and times of the person you're portraying or its protagonist. We don't get to choose what Frodo does in Lord of the Rings. Now, of course, we could play a Lord of the Rings video game, but you know what I mean. Lord of the Rings is excellent. There's, there's not a competition between types of media, but Sunless Sea is a good reminder of what I started this channel about. The idea that the stories we tell through video games are unique in their opportunity to let us define them. Sure, there are parameters for the game, but this is basically the clearest divide in this idea I've seen. The NPCs have really simple, clear quest decisions. You can see them, no matter what point of the quest you're at and the Z-Captain is completely free. So that's the beauty of an active narrative. The ability for us, the player, to step into the shoes of a character and portray them and navigate this world in a meaningful way. So thanks for watching. I thought this would be a good return to form to discuss active narratives again. This is basically the fundamental argument if you want to call it the thesis of my channel. And as I get back into making videos, sorry I missed so many, I wanted to get one that really summarized this point maybe a little bit more efficiently and better in presentation style than I did the first time.
If you enjoyed this video, I am again doing my best to make videos every Wednesday that are like this, so please stick around. Uh, go ahead, subscribe, like this video, watch my other main features, and I will see you next Wednesday. Thank you all so much.